Okay. So we had almost covered this slide. So let's go back to the next line and see if everything is covered. Basically, just an example, if you're in 890, 800 megahertz band, then there are two links, uplink and downlink. So 25 megahertz was allocated downlink and 25 megahertz uplink, 50 megahertz total. 25 megahertz is divided into 125, 200 kilohertz frequency channels. So that is how much now we are going to worry about. So remember that FDMA part. So we have 125 channels, frequency channels. And now we are going to take each of those 200 megahertz, 200 kilohertz things and then put slots in there. Each frequency channel is TDMA with a slot period of 1526. Eight burst period make a TDMA frame of 120 upon 26. One user traffic channel is one burst period. So basically each user just get that burst. Okay. And it is called traffic channel. Why traffic channel? Because that is an other part is control channel. So 26 frames become one multi frame and 24 are used for traffic, one for control, and one is not used. Okay, they reserved it for something, and I'm surprised it's still reserved. Then there is a slow associated control channel. So one of these slots is used for SCCH, SACCH, a slow associated control channel. All right, so this is pure control in the sense that this is what. Um, the basis system are talking to each other about, I mean, you know, whatever, you know, is used. And if there's not a sufficient capacity, they can even take it from the fast associated. Fast associated is the one that is stolen. stolen. When a user moves from one tower to other tower, that is fast. Okay? So that is, so as even the slow can take the fast. And the steering base identify whether that half slot is data or control. And now let's control, can calculate the size. So 200 kilohertz translates to 270.8 kilobits. Okay, it's like 1.3 bits per hertz. Now you divide that kilobits into eight slots, you get 36 kilobits per second for each slot or each burst or each user. Um, sorry, per slot, and then because the slot size is 15 millisecond, 15.26 millisecond, you multiply these two numbers and you get the number of bits, which is 156.25 bits in each burst. And it, so that's how you, you saw here, 156.25 total. And the second thing is that even though each user gets, each user gets 34 kilobits per second, by the time all the tail bits and everything else is gone, you get 9.6 kilobits. Okay, and that matches very well with the with the date and the time. 9600 baud modems you used to have before. The data rate was that rate, rate popular data rate in that time frame. All right, I don't understand why it's keep moving. Okay. So GSM, voice coding is done at 64 kilobits. Now this is another thing which is from the phone company business, basically, we teach that in the in the 473 when we talk about these things, is that um, voice is sampled at 64 kilobits, um, sampled at 8 kilohertz, sorry. At, so voice is sampled at 8 kilohertz and 8 bits per, per sample, so that gives you 64 kilobits per second. And so we compress that to 16 for GSM. So GSM already starts from compression. If you take a normal voice phone, the voice wired phone, the voice goes at 64 kilobits uncompressed. But on the GSM, we start with 60, 16. And um, I think we covered most of it. Um, the SIM card we talked about and the mobile assisted handoff. So mobile basically sends identities of the six base stations for handoff. So what mobile does is whenever it is not transmitting, like remember the slots and all that, it has only some time to transmit. During the other time, it can scan and see which towers it can see. 
and when it feels that its tower that it is connected to is 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 um is slower than the others are you know are are not slower is lower than the other signal strength then it can tell look can i switch to one of these six these are my top six and then msc will select which one to move to okay generally they even take care of your direction so they know that okay one second earlier you said you are going here and these are the six and now you are going here these are the six so they will know which way you are moving and they will select the tower that will be ideal for you so that they, you don't want to go backwards and then they also introduce few years later after gsm was done they introduce sms which was really surprising to them because somebody said okay why don't we let people do texting and somebody said well why would you want to do texting when you can call right now we know <laughs> so that has become more popular than calling i would rather text you know, than call often times and you know, because it's so so fast done and um, and you don't have to say hello so <laughs> So that is 160 characters. Basically, what that is is sent over the control channel. So there is a control channel which is you saw here this um, channel which is always available. You don't have to make any connection. The phone doesn't say I want to connect to this tower, that tower. You just send it on that channel, control channel, and it's gone. And um, so, so that's why it is limited in characters because it goes on the control channel, and it can go in any kind of broadcast. So, so it is possible to have broadcast text, which is done when you get an alert or something. Now, let's do some math here, calculations. <clears throat> so, a particular cellular system has the following characteristic: cluster size is seven, user density is hundred users per square kilometer, allocated frequency spectrum is that. bit rate required is 10 kilobits uplink and 10 kilobits downlink the modulation rate is 1 bits per hertz so just like we got 1.3 from gsm before gsm was designed this is the calculation they have to do i mean actually not only for design even for deployment so you have 1 bits per hertz how much bandwidth is available per cell using fdd and so on so forth these are the questions we have to answer um let's just go to the answer um One bits per hertz, so 49 megahertz. Because in this example, 900, 949, nine, 49 megahertz divided by seven, a cluster of seven, so you get seven megahertz per cell. And because you are going to do FDD in that, which is half of it is going to be uplink, half of it downlink. So downlink will get 3.5, uplink will get 3.5. And um, now, how many users can you support with this? 3.5 megahertz. Well, each user needs 10 kilobits, so each user needs 10 kilohertz because 1 bits per hertz. Now, 3.5 means you can use 350 users per cell, right? Now, the cell area is 100 users per square kilometer, so the cell area should be 3.5 square kilometer. So now we we know how big a cell we need, right? What is the cell radius? Now that we know the area, we can calculate the radius pi r square. 